Mixing with Mike plugin of the week comes from Antares. It's the Autotune Vocal EQ. The Vocal EQ is a dynamic EQ with pitch tracking. It has six bands that can be either a low shelf, high shelf, or bell shape. It has high pass, low pass filters. It has a tilt EQ, and it also has an air band, allowing you to boost or lift high frequencies at a tilt. Sort of like a, a shelving EQ where the knee on the high shelf is above our hearing range, although you can set it down as low as 2.5K, and we'll demonstrate what that's all about. So as you go through each of the individual bands, you have the frequency selection, as you see here. You have a Q control, a gain control, so as we boost, we can narrow or widen the Q, all the things you would expect. You can enable it uh, to track the pitch by hitting the track button. It will follow the fundamental here, is set to one, and if you start to scale it upward, then it will follow the harmonics as you go up. That's why it switches from harmonic or from frequency to harmonic when you switch the tracking on. It also is dynamic, so you could take, you have a threshold, which you could bring down, so as the signal passes above, you could either have it uh, compress, right, bringing it down lower and setting a maximum for the gain reduction, or you can have it upward expand. So uh, that gives you a load of possibilities, because you can have negative gain, but have it upward expand. You could have positive gain, but have it downward compress from there and all the variations in between. Uh, it has an attack and release control. It can run uh, by internal sidechain, meaning that the signal feeding into the plugin is what triggers the tracking and everything else, or you can have the sidechain keyed externally, which means you can feed in another source through your DAW, if it's supported obviously, um, through a bus from another uh, input signal that would uh, change the pitch tracking. So you could do it that way as well. Each individual band can be turned off or soloed. Uh, there's a series of shortcuts that kind of work in with the individual bands. If you right click on it, it will solo the band. If you double click on it, it will bypass it. Uh, if you shift click, it will lock the pitch and allow you to move the gain. If you use the command key on a Mac, it will lock the gain and allow you to shift the pitch. So I think the translation for that in Windows would be the control key. Uh, and if you hit the control key on a Mac, which would probably be the start key, you can switch between high shelf, low shelf, and uh, bell curve. So you have some options there. Uh, option key will reset. So you have a whole series of options on that end. A wet dry control if you want to do extreme settings and just sort of do a parallel EQ. And, uh, and then there's a series of, of other options here on the toolbar, which I'll get into. Input control, uh, level control, output level control to balance for unity gain. If you're into that kind of thing, you can turn the pitch tracking on and off. Select the type for the pitch tracking. So you have um, a very high voice, a soprano, alto, low male. You can uh, choose any of those uh, there. You could choose instrument. That's great for flutes and um, uh, other uh, single note instruments. Uh, bass instrument. Obviously perfect for bass, upright bass, electric bass, etc. cetera. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that in the end. We have the uh, a learn control, which I guess uh, it will pick the best algorithm based on the input signal. So if you have an instrument you're not sure, select that and, and let it kind of figure it out on its own. Or even with the voice, if you're not sure, maybe it's somewhere between an alto and a soprano or between a tenor and a bass, let it figure it out for you and give the best algorithm accordingly. You can also turn the Spectrum Analyzer on or off. Uh, you can make it pre or post EQ, so it could show you pre settings or post EQ settings, uh, however you like there. And then you have the whole preset menu here, uh, allowing you to you know save and store and load presets. And they have a whole bunch of presets that are available to you here. All right. So that aside, then we have undo and redo. We also have a menu here where you could set the appearance to be light if you prefer that look, set it to be dark, or set it to follow the system preference. So if your system preferences are for dark mode, it will follow that. Uh, open GL drawing, that would be uh, most likely for Windows. Um, help topics, uh, tool tips, if you're getting started, that can be help. Uh, re reset the window size and it shows you the latest version or the version that you have installed. Uh, there's also a bypass, master bypass in the top right. 
that uh, will bypass the plugin, and uh, you see that it follows here with the DAW. So let's get right to it. Let's make some sounds here. So let's start with um, a simple basic thing. Let's go over two basic things. One is the air EQ. Um, so with the air EQ, uh, I'm not sure if this is you know, specifically taken from the Mog EQ, which has the quote unquote air band where you're boosting up at like 40 kilohertz. And the idea is that you have a shelving EQ where um, the corner frequency on the shelving EQ is above. So what you end up with is this flat kind of lifted EQ. So you see here, this is up at 15K. If I kind of bring it back, you could see a bit more of the shelving shape as I bring it down to 2.5. So that's the lowest I can bring it here, or I could bring it all the way up to 40K and then crank it up and you get like this lift that's right up at the very end there. So you could see here that's plus 6 dB. So you'll get, you can get a little bit of that. And that's like a nice way of adding a little bit of just, yeah, air right up on the top. And it sounds great. Let's, let's just kind of go over that real quick. Uh, let me solo up the vocal here. Who I've been is not who I am. There's already a bit of air already on the original vocal. Been walking this road where no one's dead. Been wrecking homes, breaking hearts without a care. Right, so that's nice, simple, clean, open on the top. Everything that you'd want to have uh, that's obviously boosting quite a bit by 18 dB. I'll bypass that for a second. Let's go over a couple of other things. All right, so that's one. The other is a tilt EQ. Now, the tilt EQ has a corner frequency. You could see here with the X, so you can sort of drag that around. And then you have the tilt. Now, the tilt here is like plus minus 3 dB, and that must be within an octave or something like that. Um, and I'm sure exactly how they measure that. But this allows you to adjust the overall tonal balance of bass to, um, or low end to high end, right? So if you have, for example, a vocal that's dark, you might want to tilt it overall a little bit, leaning more towards the high end. And it does so, it'll do so with that shape in a kind of very transparent kind of way. Let's just check that out. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. All right, and sometimes I find that this works a little bit better after you've made some of the other adjustments, although you can kind of, uh, you know, use it whatever way that you like. All right, so that's available to you there. Uh, let's see, let's kind of go over uh, some of the other, like, normal EQs. Um, so let's say, for example here, I'll just take uh, this, do a high shelf here on it, and let's just kind of do like a general boost here of the high end and low end. So this is like a good, simple way to kind of go in and take and balance the low end and high end. So this would be another way in lieu of using the tilt. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. And then obviously you can adjust the cue and all of that sort of stuff. I'll save the dynamic stuff here for uh, for this. So let's just kind of go here to the second band. So if I take this here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to boost, I'm going to kind of boost in a narrow area, but I want it to pitch track. So I want this to kind of follow the fundamental of the vocal. So now that I've kind of tilted this a little bit away from the low end and more up towards the high end, because maybe I want a very airy, present kind of voice for this, um, now I can have this sort of track and follow the fundamental of the vocal using the track. And we got our pitch tracking on, so we'll do a little boost. Let's see what happens. Who I've been is not who I am. And then I can do this, the, how fast it reacts here, by pulling the attack faster. Who I've been is not. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. 
I'll take that back. That's not following the tracking. That's not making the tracking faster. That would be the dynamics. So uh, uh, hold on, excuse me. Sorry, screwed that up. But let's narrow the cue on this, right? So I can keep it kind of tight and focused. Who I've been is not who I am. Or if I want to warm it up, I can widen the cue. Been walking this road where no one's dead. Right. So that allows me to kind of keep the vocal very clean and focused and tight. And often the problem that you have with a normal EQ is that you have a range of frequencies. And if you, you sort of want to boost, you know, all of them equally um, and, you know, allow the EQ to affect all of them. But if you boost into a particular area, you know, that's not, say, below the notes that they're singing. So it's bringing up like a general warmth or something like that, sort of tilting in some warmth from the bottom. Then what's going to happen is if you focus on a particular frequency, you're going to make, you may accentuate certain notes over others. The other thing that's kind of cool with this is that if we take this and then we bring in a bit of the dynamics here for this. So let's just say that if I want this to compress, what I can do is I can sort of set this so that it will kind of even out the notes a bit. Now, this is not uneven, this particular performance, but it, just to give you an idea of how this can work. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. Right? So I can have it to sort of follow along and I can make it more aggressive. Who I've been is not who I am. Right. And what that'll do, what that would do is it would just keep the notes like note to note a little bit more even. So obviously if a particular note is a little bit lower, it would even it out or pull it up. Now, depending upon the type of performance, you may or may not want to do that. If you if you're trying to kind of make something really stand out in a very dense production where you really need to bring out every note, this is a great great tool to have for that. And then obviously you can increase the intensity how far it will go by extending the range. Who I've been is not who I am. Right. So obviously if we're just doing like sort of a gentle kind of evening out. I could just put it a couple of dB and kind of let it do its business there. Another common thing might be uh, another usage here might be doing something here where say we have a and, and there's not a particular like sibilance or harshness or something. But let's just say that I went in. Let me just see if I can find something here. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. All right, so I'm, I'm describing a little bit of a, a semi sibilant type of thing. It's there's not a lot. Of, it's not a lot there. I was looking for something. If there was a particular tone. So one thing I wanted to show you here, which is kind of cool. If we take this and then uh, let's do a bit of a dip here. I'm not going to do any gain, but what I'm going to have it do is I'm just going to have it track that particular pitch and I'm going to do like a narrower cue here. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. Been wrecking homes, breaking hearts without a care. All right, so let's say that I had like a bit of harshness on, you know, so I could kind of do it really fast in and out. Who I've been is not who I am. Right, so I want, and I wanted to basically kind of get it to, you know, kind of almost like notch it out a little bit, take a little bit of the edge off. But I wanted to kind of push in like the air in or up above. So let's just take, say that I take this, uh, make the range kind of go upward here, do a similar kind of thing. Who I've been is not who I am. 
Been walking this road where no one's dead. So what I can do here is if I if I now take this band, I can get a bit more dramatic about how far I bring it down. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. So the idea here is that I can take... Been wrecking homes, breaking hearts. If I have a particular resonance or a particular area there where maybe it's nasally or where there's a little bit of a harshness or something like that, I can sort of have it dynamically somewhat take it out when it occurs, but also lift up the frequencies around it so that I don't, I'm basically moving the energy out of a particular area into other areas. So it, with this vocal, it's not the greatest example, but I think you get the basic idea uh, of what I'm trying to do there. Um, and then you could do dips dynamically, all the other sort of stuff. And then this may be the place to bring in our tilt EQ. Let's uh, place it on here. And then we can just sort of take with within, in fact, let's just go back here for a second. Uh, let me just take the dynamics of this out of the picture here and then just go back to our boost, kind of where we had it. Let's just take band five off. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead Been wrecking home All right, and now let's go back to the tilt EQ Who I've been is not Who I am Been walking this road where no one's dead or maybe we go to the air band and we put the air band on. Who I've been is not who I am. Been walking this road where no one's dead. Been wrecking homes, breaking hearts. Without a care Left a trail of tears Lived in fear and now you're scared To love again You So you get the basic idea there. Uh, and plenty of other ways that you could use it. Uh, it could just work great just as a static EQ. It has like a very clean, natural, non phasey kind of sound. I don't know that there's nothing in there that says it's linear phase or anything, but obviously the, um, the metrics that they're using sound very clean and open. I also didn't... Uh, um, there's also a way to have this auto detect or learn what your you know low pass filter would be but i you know i don't think that that's really necessary and you can get a more natural sound with a softer So you can have that, you know, sort of chase down to the bottom, you know, sharper cue on this um, higher order noise filter will just give you like a more detailed, sharper sound. And uh, this does not track 
with the pitch. And maybe there's some reasons behind that. I uh, know in some of the other ones that do this, like Surf EQ, I believe you can have it chase. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Shade, I think, also has a pitch tracking thing built in. The pitch tracking here is the best of all the ones that I've seen so far, though, um, I, that work in this way, unless there's others that I'm not aware of. So that's just one you know, way to work. And obviously with the EQ, I probably could have done a whole lot better uh, job there with that. On the other end, uh, I also did something here just to kind of give you a little bit of an idea where you could use this also on a bass. And so I have a bass here. And one of the one of the cool things about this and, and one of the ways to use this is that you can, as a way to just sort of make a bass tighter, right? I'm obviously selecting bass instrument as my input type. It's tracking the pitch. But I could track more than just the fundamental. So here in band four, I'm tracking a harmonic, I guess nine harmonics up. So I was looking for something that's in the mid-range just to give me a little bit of a boost in a note area that will translate to smaller speaker systems. And give me a little bit of an attack, right? So obviously not that loud. Uh, and then here I have the... Um, here I have just a simple boost that sort of chases around the note, allowing me to kind of keep the low end tight and not make it muddy. Because normally what you end up having to do here is it's, you know, to cover a range of what notes are being played, you end up using a shelving EQ to bring them up overall. And if you're getting some inequity between the different note levels, you could do the same kind of threshold range control like I did with the uh, vocal just to sort of even out your bass notes and that can be really handy especially if you have a very active um, bass part where the note may not be as consistent from string to string or note to note in the performance this would be a great way of evening it out and kind of working with that so it's a valuable tool in that regard as well and it helps to keep the bass focused right it allows me to kind of keep it so that the bass will stay within a tighter range and and not give me a lot of extra mud in the mix to sort of clog things up. Here. Who I am Been walking this road where no one's dead Been Breaking homes, breaking hearts without a care Left a trail of tears, lived in fear and now you're scared To love again you done here also with this low shelf which you could do in place of you know uh, I guess that would be the option to track in place of doing the um, high pass filter which would actually be a better phase coherence so you could just pull the gain way down uh, and shift the corner frequency down lower and you would get a similar kind of effect um, having it track the the lower note just to kind of pull it down overall and and bringing out a note that has like a little bit more focus to just sort of uh, lift it up going up to the uh, second harmonic first harmonic being the source note however you want to count it whether it's zero and one you get the basic idea I'll just follow the math that they have here one being the fundamental and then two here and that way I can get it to sort of sit kind of where I want and then just sort of follow uh, and track along with everything. And I find it a very effective way to sort of bring out a bass that uh, has a lot of movement in it, and it's important to get the, that consistency with the notes and the tightness of the notes without getting all of the mud that can come along with the bass. A um, lot of uses for it, um, still finding them. And uh, I always, I love dynamic EQs, although I, I find that 
they're limited just when they're tied to frequencies. And when you have the thing with the pitch tracking, it really opens up a whole other world of possibilities. So a welcome addition also with the, um, you know, uh, 25 years plus 28 years of, um, you know, pitch tracking development from Antares. Uh, you can't go wrong. So there it is. Plugin of the week from Antares. Autotune, vocally cute. Check it out.